First Kings chapter 15 verse 9. Asa. I hope we have enough time. This is one of the kings that needs to be studied. In the 20th year of Jeroboam north, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah south. It gets co quite complicated. And 41 years reigned he in Jerusalem. That's a lot of years. David, Solomon, King Saul, all had 40 years. And his mother's name was Micah, the daughter of Absalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. That's good. But it don't stay good. As did David his father. Now is David his father? Absolutely not. Grandfather. Simple. Uh, you know, I like to see when grandfather ever became a word. I don't think you ever see grandfather in the Bible. It'd be an interesting study. And he, <clears throat> excuse me. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land. Now, if you remember, the first time Sodomites showed up, we read it in chapter 14, verse 24, and that involved religion. Amazing how the first time Sodomite shows up and involves religion. Now, here's a guy set up in the kingdom and give you a little advance. He's going to get out religion. He's going to kick out idols. And one of the things he does, he kicks out Sodomites. Why is America not going to get into a revival? They love and enjoy Sodomites. And that's religion. And religion is not of God. And removed all the idols that his fathers had made. That would be Solomon. Also Micah, his mother. Even her, he removed from being queen. Because she had made an image, made an idol in a grove. So here's an idol in a grove, and he's like, Mom, you're out of here. I'm your son. You're, I mean, I'm your mother. You're out. Get out of here. Now look what he's done. Here's a man who's told his family, Hey, I'm going to serve God. And Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kidron. So, I mean, he only, got, only not he destroyed it, but that's it. He put it through, flushed it down the brook. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect all to the fullest with the Lord all his days. That's kind of interesting if you, what we're going to read about Asa. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated and the things which himself had dedicated into the house of the Lord. Silver and gold and vessels. Now remember, Shishak has come in. He's taking the treasures out of the house of the Lord. He's taking the treasures out of the kingdom. Here are treasures that were hidden, I guess, where King Shishak has not found. He's like, well, bring them back into the house of the Lord. And there was war between Asa and Basha, the king of Israel, north and south, civil war. Always that conflict now. Always those troubles. All their days. And Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah. All right, here's North coming against the south, and built Ramah that he might not suffer any to go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. So, what's going on? People in, in Israel, the northern country, they are coming down to Jerusalem like they're supposed to be coming. They're coming to the feast three times a year, the males are to come. And they're doing that. And Basha is like, uh-uh. He's putting up gates. He's putting up walls. He's putting up barriers. You're not ever going down to Jerusalem where Asa is. Exactly what Jeroboam did. He built cities. Hey, don't go down there. Preventing the service of God. It'd be like if a religion in this country came up and said, actually, no more Bible-believing Christianity. No more being born again. It has to be the world council of churches. It has to be mother church. Everything else, I think that happened during the dark ages. That's the exact uh, idea when religion takes over. And Asa took all the silver and the gold that were left in the treasures of the house of the Lord. Uh-oh, here we go. And the treasures of the king's house and delivered them into the hand of his servants and King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, 
the son of Tabrun, Tabrumon, the son of Hezron, king of Syria, that dwelt in Damascus, saying, so now he's going to rely not on God. He's going to rely on an outsource. He's going to rely on man. Instead of going to God, he's going to run to a bank and get a loan. Instead of relying on God, he's going to go to a friend. Instead of relying on God, he's going to go to a church. There's a league between me and thee, and between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent unto thee a present that came out of the house of the Lord and came out of the king's house. Of silver and gold. Come and break thy lead with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. All right. Syria is signed up with, with northern Israel. They're an ally to each other. Now, Asa, south Judah, comes and says, Listen, if I give you enough money, can I buy you out? Now, if there is enough money to buy somebody out, why would you trust that person? If he will turn his allegiance against Israel north for gold and silver, what makes him think that he will not turn allegiance against you for somebody who's got a higher price? That's not good. Better put your trust in God. So Ben-Hadad hearkened unto King Asa and sent the captains of the host, which he had against the cities of Israel north, and smote Ijon and Dan, that's north, and Abel beth Mechon. And all Chinonoff, Chinonoff, and all the land of Naphtali. And you can find that on any map. That's north. And it came to pass when Baasha heard of thereof, and he left off build, building of Ramah and dwelt in Tarzan. Tarza. So he's like, I'm out of here. I'm in trouble. And maybe we'll figure Tarza is a stronger built city. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout all Judah. None was Exempt. That's the only time that word shows up. Exempt. And they took away the stones of Rimna. That's his, that's the area that uh, Israel was building, Basha, to prevent northern to come down to Jerusalem. And the timber thereof, wherewith Basha had built it. King Asa built with them Geba of Benjamin and Mizpah. So he takes his city and the stones and the rocks and the wood of this city to prevent people from coming to Jerusalem. He said, all right, let's go to Benjamin, let's fortify this city. Let's go to Mizpah and, and build up this city. <laughs> the rest of the acts of Asa and all his might and all that he did and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Nevertheless, in the time of his old age, he was diseased, that's the first time that word shows up, diseased in his feet. And Asa slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead. Okay, so now, there is much more about Asa. Second Chronicles 14.1, is it not written in the Chronicles? Well, let's go over there and read about Asa. Second Chronicles 14. We're going to read the highlights. But it, it's... Second Chronicles 14, 1. Second Chronicles 14, 1. Scripture with Scripture. So Abijah, that's the last king, slept with his father. And they buried him in the city of David. That's uh, Zion. And Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. Uh, I particularly know, I, I forget how time goes by quick. It may have been this year or last year, or maybe three. But they just found the city of David, and they're now exploring it. And they are finding a wealth, and will find more wealth of archaeological marvel inside. Now, most of it will not get publicized, because it's only going to prove the Bible. But it's remarkable, the city of David. In his days, the land was quiet ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. His God. So look, peace because he done right. There hasn't been peace in his time since Rehoboam and Jeroboam had civil wars. He took away the altars of the strange gods. Now we get more information. This guy is breaking down churches. 
This guy is destroying religious buildings. You want a revival in America? You got to destroy the altars of the gods are not God. Too many Christians and Baptists today, oh, we got to protect it. We got to make sure everybody can serve the, their God of their own choice. Aren't they supposed to serve Jesus Christ and be saved? Isn't that the right God? You're promoting religion. You know how many religions have come out of America now? Falseness? And they're the religions as the Jehovah Witnesses New York, uh, the Mormons New York, Mary Baker Eddy, I don't know where that came from, but the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons are the biggest renowned people and false religions of God that travel worldwide with their hellish doctrine. And are allowed to build and promote themselves in America, the Christian nation. This guy is going to the altar of strength God and took him away. The high places and break down the images. Pictures. You got a picture of Jesus in that Bible? Rip it up, burn it. And cut down the groves. See, there's something wrong with the groves. And commanded Judah, that's his realm, to seek the Lord God of his fathers. And to do the law and the commandment. Now he has no charge over Israel nor. But <coughs> excuse me. in his realm, we're going to serve God and we're going to serve God right. If you don't like it, you can go north. If you don't like it, go to Egypt. If you don't like it, go down south. If you don't like it, cross the Jordan River. But as far as this land, we're going to serve God. And people would cry, church and state, church and state. Well, if you're going to serve the God, the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that suffered and died and, and shed his blood on Calvary's cross and came out of that empty tomb, if you're going to say that God, then amen, glory to God. You're going to say a God that you eat, a God that you sell magazines, or a God that will chop off people's heads and say those are nice, friendly people, we ought to get along with them? The hell with you. Because that's where they're going. Also, he took away... Out of all the cities of Judah, the high places, and the images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. Look at that. He had peace. He took away the images, took away the religion. And he built fenced cities in Judah. Well, might as well. The enemy's going to come. I'm getting right with God, and guess what? The enemy's going to come. I am trying to do God's service. I'm trying to serve God, and I know Satan's going to come and stop me. And once you want to get right, once you start cleaning your house, once you start wanting to serve God, once you want to start reading the Bible, once you want to start witnessing, once you want to take a stand for God, you better mark the words that Satan is going to be right behind you. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Build your stronghold, because Satan will come when you want to do right. For the land had rest, and he had no war in those days, because the Lord had given him rest. That's perfect rest. Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities, make about them walls and towers and gates and bars, with the land is yet before us. Because we have sought the Lord our God, we have sought him. He has given us rest on every side, so they build and prosper. So look at it. even in peace, let's defend ourselves. This peace is not going to last long. The enemy is going to come. And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears out of Judah. 300,000. And out of Benjamin. Remember, Benjamin is inside of Judah. And bear shields and draw bows. And 204 score thousand. All these were mighty men of ours. Soldiers, army, military. And there came out against them. Zura the Ethiopian. It's not the first time we heard them coming. With an host of a thousand, a thousand thousand. And 300 chariots and came unto Masha. Now the Ethiopians were involved with Ziza as that. What's his name? Oh, it's over here. King of Egypt came over. Zizak, king of Egypt. He had the Ethiopians with him. Then Asa went out against him. They set the battle in Ray in the valley of Zephtha. At Marsha. Forgive me for saying the name wrong. And Asa cried unto the Lord his God. God I need help. Lord it is nothing with thee to help. Whether with many. Or with them that have. 
no power. Help us, O Lord, our God, for we rest on thee. And in thy name we go against the, the multitude. O Lord God, O Lord, thou art our God. Let not men prevail against you. Look and rely on God. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. Asa and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar. Genesis 20, verse 2, and Genesis 26, verse 6. Isaac was there. And the Ethiopians were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord. Not Asa, not Judah, before the Lord, and before his host. That's Israel, or maybe angels. Lord's host is also angels. And they carried away very much spoil. <laughs> and they smote all the cities round about Gerar. From the fear of the Lord came upon them. And they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceedingly much spoil in it. Man, they took a lot of goods. They smote also the tents of the cattle. <laughs> Look at that. Cattle had their own tents. And carried away sh sheep and camels in abundance and returned to Jerusalem. Man, they got goods, they got silver, they got good gold and animals. Chapter 15. And the Spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit, came upon Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear ye me, Asa. And all Judah and Benjamin, they're together. And the Lord is with you while ye be with him. Look at that warning. While you be. While. That's a warning. And if. That's a warning. Ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if. That's a warning. Ye forsake him, he will forsake you. It's a warning. Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without a law. That's north. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord God of Israel, he sought him and he was found of them. And in those times, there was no priest, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexation upon, were upon all the inhabitants of the country. So people, you know, they're trying to cause Israel troubles. I will curse them that curse you. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong therefore and let not your hands be weak. For your work shall be rewarded. Talking to Asa. There's a prophet. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy obeyed, the prophet, he took courage. And put away abominable idols out of all the land. Look at he's still. There's still stuff there. Or maybe they rebuilt. He's like, it's, it's got to go. Got to go. And Benjamin, now the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim. And renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. He goes up to the, to the temple. He's at the brazen altar. He's like, De rededicate it to God. After all the junk is gone. He gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers, Gentiles, with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel. In the bunch. Here comes people out of northern Israel. They're like, we want to serve God. We want to do right. Asa, what do we do? We're rededicating the altar. Come on, let's serve the Lord. While they saw that the Lord was God, was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem on the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. And they offered in the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought. Seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. This is stuff they got. It's God's. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers. With all their heart. With all their soul. That's what the law. So love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might. That whosoever would not seek... Government reform. The Lord God of Israel shall be put to death. Capital punishment if you don't want to serve the Lord. I guess it was harsh in the Old Testament to serve God. Asa did not want anybody to bring up religion. He made sure. I don't know. I think America's got it wrong. I think the church has got it wrong today. You know what the freedom has done? Caused nobody to go out and preach the gospel. In the book of Acts, when they're persecuted, the church grew. 
whether small or great, whether men or women, and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice. Oh, they hate that loud voice. And with shouting, with trumpets, and with cornets. Uh, the band is striking up. The orchestra for God. And all Judah rejoice at the oath, and they had sworn, which they had sworn in all their heart, and sought him with their whole desire. And he was, he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest around the mouth. Now look at that. It's not a church. The people are willing with him. It's not only an order of law. It's like, we're with you, king. And I suppose there were some people that went against it. I suppose there was some rebellion. And also concerning Maka, the mother of Asa the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol. In the so look how late we learn in Second Chronicles. He wants his mother. His mother's been on next to that throne for a while. And when he comes for this reforming, he wants to get right. Mom, we've got right as a nation. You're not right. You've not got rid of that idol. Get your butt out of here. I'll take care of your idol. He destroyed it. She made an idol in a in a grove. And Asa cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the book at the brook Kindra. Look at that. Just like Moses did with that golden calf. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Now you see, when you read Kings, and then you read Second Chronicles, it's like, well, wait a minute. I thought he said he took out all the high high places. But the high places were not taken out. So what is the contradiction? He's removed them. But they some of them have been rebuilt. Without his knowledge. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. He brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated. And that he himself had dedicated. Silver, gold, and vessel. There's stuff in there of his own wealth. And there was no more war unto the 5th and 30th year of the reign of Asa. 35, 35th year. So, um, we want to perk up at 16.7 and finish with chapter 16. In that time, Hananiah, the seer, that's a prophet, came to Asa the king and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria. Remember he gave the money? That came in late. That came after the reform. And not relied on the Lord thy God. Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. Were not the Ethiopians and Lib Libans a huge host? Remember that war we read. A very many chariots and horsemen. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Proverbs 15, 4 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, relying on the Syrians. Therefore from hence thou shalt have wars. And we just read about it. Here comes the wars. The Nasa was wroth with the seer and put him in prison. There was no repentance. There was jail. Put him in the prison house for he was enraged with him because of this thing, the prophecy. And Asa oppressed some of the people at the same time. Now look how switch he's gone over. He's gone right with God. Now he's putting, he's putting prophets in jail and he's putting the people to oppression. Like Solomon did. The acts of worshiping other gods is an act of oppression. There is no fear of God, so you oppress the people. There is no peace, saith the Lord unto the wicked. And behold the acts of Asa, first and last. Lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. We read that. And Asa in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet. Okay, we read that. Unto his disease was exceedingly great. We didn't read that in 1 Kings. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord Jehovah, but to physicians. Now there's a woman that comes up to Jesus. She spent all her money, Luke the doctor says, on all the doctors to relieve herself of the bleeding. 
And then finally, after all that, she comes to Jesus and gets healed. The man that was perfect, the man that started out right, when it comes to his feet being diseased, he is so angry at the prophet. He is so angry with God right now. I am not even going to ask God. I'll go to a physician. Huh? Is that the first time for a physician? I don't know. I don't know how to, I mean, check, check real quick. I, know this. I was going to say, Jesus said they that are whole don't need a physician. But they that are sick, so there's nothing wrong. No, nope. Genesis 50, verse 2, when that involves uh, involvement in Jacob. That's interesting. Uh, there's nothing wrong with going to a doctor, Jesus said. Some people, oh, I won't go to a doctor. You know what was the problem with Asa? He didn't go to God first. You got to seek God, what doctor do I go? God, will you be with that doctor? God, will you help me with that doctor? And Asa slept with his fathers. And died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. And they buried him in his own sepulchres. So he's buried in his own place. Which he had made for himself in the city of David. And laid him in a bed which was filled with sweet odors. That's what they were going to do to Jesus. But they ran out of time. Remember that Sunday morning when the women came with the spices? To anoint the body? There it is. This is what was supposed to happen to Jesus' body. But when they come to the tomb, there is no body. He's risen, and diverse kinds of spices prepared by the apothecary's art. They made a very great burning for him. That's kind of an interesting statement. Burning, fire. 